This is the Osborne Mill Preserve. I'm Darren, and this is the Industrial Revolution. Well, let's be honest, this is kind of an experiment on the Industrial Revolution today. Uh, when I go looking for places to film, uh, either I know the place already, or I've been there already, or I find information about it online and go out and, and get some, some more information and do the filming. Uh, it doesn't always work. If you've ever tried to look up information on, on old sites online, you've probably run into the same problem. Uh, I was looking at parks and stuff along the Huron River. The Huron River is just barely over here. And I saw this place called Osborne Mill Preserve. Well, sounds like there should be a mill there, right? So I put in Osborne Mill into, uh, into Google and it came up with about a half dozen links back to the park page here. And the park page doesn't say a single word. Okay, it says one single word about the mill, which is in the name. Everything else is about the nature out here at the mill site. Now, I drove out here anyway. It wasn't that far of a drive. I'm about halfway between Dexter and Ann Arbor. And hoping I'm gonna find something. I have not been here before. Uh, the trail's just behind me, and we're gonna go explore that together. But before we go, even though I found no information, I do know something about this place. And you probably know something about places when you go out to them as well. You just have to think about it a little bit. So what do I know? Well, I know this area was settled in the uh, early mid 1800s. Uh, it's farming area, lots of farmland around here. It's great farmland. So probably this mill was built in the early to mid 1800s, most likely towards the earlier end of that. I know I'm just downriver, like less than a quarter mile downriver from Delhi Rapids, which is a fairly good sized rapid. There's one of only two left on the Huron River right now. And that means that they could have had a mill race from just above the rapids down here. And they could have pulled off eight, 10, 12 foot drop at the mill. So they could have had a lot of power here. Uh, much more so than in a lot of other places along the Huron, actually. So it could have been a very powerful mill. I know that as people were moving in, in the early 1800s, they needed sawmills. Now you're building houses, you're building barns, you're building your other farm buildings, you're building towns. You've got to have your sawmills. So this could be a sawmill. Once stuff's built, once people have started farming though, now you need grist mills. And the grist mills actually lasted quite a bit longer. So this could be a grist mill also. So it is possible, in fact, that it was both. Uh, a lot of mills in this area actually had both, at least for a while. So we're looking for a sawmill or a grist mill. We're looking for probably small. Uh, it would have had a lot of power, but at the same time, uh, along the Huron River, which is about 130, 140 miles long, uh, there were something like a hundred dam or hundred mills along this river. So it didn't have to be absolutely huge. Also, although the Huron River is navigable by canoe, uh, it's not navigable by anything bigger than that. At least not up at this point, not till you get down past Flat Rock. And that means that transportation wasn't great, so you weren't looking at a big regional mill site. Uh, also, if you were looking at a big regional mill site, probably would have been in closer to Ann Arbor. Uh, so we're looking at a small mill. If it's a grist mill, it's one, maybe two stones. If it's a sawmill, just, just one, one sawing station. Uh, we know it was probably built early to mid uh, 1800s. Uh, given that time frame, we know that uh, water turbines for mills were actually invented around 1850s sometime. Uh, so if these were built before 1850, we're looking at a water wheel. Uh, that means that you know, we've got to have enough space on the mill race that we can get a water wheel in. It takes a little more water than a turbine, less efficient than a turbine, but hey, that's what existed, so that's what they would have been using. So that's what we're looking at out here. We're looking for, for one or two mills. We're looking for moderate-sized building. They're not huge. And we're looking for what's probably going to be the easiest thing to find, actually, is a mill race or a tail race. Uh, 
didn't need most likely a big mill pond in this case because the mill pond would have actually been kind of automatically managed by uh, Delhi Rapids just upriver. My guess is they would have cut the mill race uh, straight from just above the rapids down to here. And that means you don't actually need much of a mill pond, don't need much of an impoundment, don't need a big dam down here. Doesn't mean they didn't do it, but they probably didn't really need it. So what else do I know about the place? Well, I do know that there was a tornado that came through. And the only reason I know that is because as I was driving here, came across to the bridge right by Delhi Rapids, I saw a sign that the bridge there, as well as the, the mills, uh, were wiped out. And according to that sign, on June 6th of 1917, a tornado came through, wiped out the bridge, wiped out the mills. And chances are that was about the end of this mill if it, if it was still around at that point. And it may have already been shut down. Most mills in this area didn't really last much past about 1950, and most didn't even survive that long. Uh, I haven't found any signs of a mill yet that actually made it past 1950 uh, in production as either a grist mill or a sawmill. Well, anyway, there's a trail right behind me that I've never been down, and probably you've never been down. And it's a beautiful day. Let's go explore it together and see what we can find. So as we head into the park and down the trail, obviously I'm paying attention to any of the signs I see along the way, because a lot of times they'll give you useful information. And in this case, um, very useful information if I'm looking for plants. Not much in terms of useful information if I'm looking for a mill. I do see there's a trail. Uh, I'm going to mostly stick to the same trail. Uh, it does not say that you can't leave the trail, just you need to minimize your impact. Uh, so that's important to always look at when you're going someplace new. Uh, if it says stay on the trail, stay on the trail. If it doesn't say stay on the trail, if you can leave with minimal impact, and only if you can leave it with minimal impact if you see something, then go ahead and do that. Uh, make sure that you're safe. Make sure you know the local dangers. Uh, things like you know, rattlesnakes, poison ivy, uh, whatever may be along the trail. Now, some flooding here. We still have some ice. This is actually the uh, first week of February today. And it's interesting that it's so warm out. Uh, normally, we'd have some snow, but the you know, weather's been kind of weird lately. So, what I'm looking for is obviously, you know, foundations would be good. Uh, any kind of a foundation, uh, whether concrete or stone. Is good. Uh, I'm also looking for water channels. Uh, a lot of the mills that were built, especially the first mills that were built out here, were mostly just wood. And as you can guess from a mill built 150, 200 years ago out of nothing but wood, there's not a whole lot left of those mill structures, uh, especially if they were abandoned over 100 years ago uh, after uh, damage. So, probably won't see much wood structure left. Could see stone. Could see, uh, in fact, the thing we're likely to see, that's likely still out here, is signs of the water channels. Uh, if it was put in a, a wooden sluice, uh, that'll be gone. If the water channel was dug, either the mill race or the tail race, there's a good chance that's still going to be around. So that's an important thing that we're looking for out here. It's a very flat area, and as you're probably hearing my feet sloshing in the mud right now, uh, pretty wet. Uh, this is floodplain area off the Huron River. Uh, it's not flooded right now, but as I said, the Huron is, is very high and we have a lot of flooding in the area. Everything as we look around, extremely flat. No signs of channels, no signs of anything yet. So we'll keep going.
So if you do go exploring, I mentioned hazards before. Uh, hazards such as, as drop-offs, uh, poisonous plants, uh, poisonous or venomous animals, uh, anything like that. Certainly you need to be careful about that. Uh, you also have to be careful about uh, your impact on the environment. Uh, don't go down steep hills where you wind up cutting ruts because those will just get bigger over time. Uh, try to avoid trampling vegetation. If there's a clear defined path, you should probably stick to the clear defined path. If there's no path or if there's just a, a brief trail uh, that might be a game trail, Sometimes it's, it's good to follow it, sometimes it's good to not follow it, depending on whether you're going to make it into a bigger trail or not. So, if you spend a lot of time outside, uh, this is all stuff basically categorized as leave no trace. And that's important. Another thing, when you do find anything, uh, generally you don't want to handle it. If you do handle it, make sure you put it back exactly where you found it. And then... Uh, no digging or anything. So I do see something interesting here. So there's a little trail off the side and I'm seeing some rocks over here. Let's go see what's over here. We might have found something. Well, the rock pile could be a foundation. It could just be a farmer's rock pile. We, uh, we don't know. There is a, uh, a gully built beyond it. This is looking promising. Okay, so as we come up here, we have a good sized rock pile. Uh, unfortunately, it does look mostly like a pile as opposed to, say, a foundation. And it stretches for a ways over here as well. We can go into it a little bit further, see if we can get any kind of a geometry out of it. And of note is that we are right on the edge of the water dropping past here. The ground dropping just past here. It does look like a bit of a wall here. If you take a look just past the tree, we have a distinct rock line there. And we follow along here. Get a good distinct straight line of stone. That actually keeps going over to here. And it looks like we have a 90 degree corner here. Uh, nature doesn't generally do straight lines or corners. We have this 90 degree corner and actually it keeps going past there as a straight line as well. Uh, this is looking promising. So let's keep going. Um, the ground here is dry, so I'm not churning up anything, not trampling any vegetation. Oh yeah, this is definitely a, a rock wall here. And we can see it just keeps going over there. We're gonna see if we can get around it a different way instead of fighting through the brush here. Let's see what else we can find over here. So if the video is a little jerky here and there, I'm doing a lot of stepping over and ducking under these branches through this tangle here. It looks like we kind of come to an end up ahead and then there's a drop and then there's a railroad uh, embankment. Uh, the railroad embankment is between us and the river. The river is just on the other side of it. Uh, so this could be the, uh, the mill location here, and this could be the tail race headed over uh, under where that railroad embankment used to be. If the railroad came in, it's possible, barely possible, but it is possible 
that there might actually be a, uh, a, a drain culvert under it that we might be able to might be able to date as not being recent. Let's see if we can see. Uh, we'll stay off the river right away, of course. Get an excuse to shaky video. Okay, we're solidly down here in very clear floodplain again. By a little less brush right here at least. And we'll check this out in a minute too. Now this is the main rail line between Detroit and Chicago. In the 1800s it was here, but it probably was just one line. It would have been narrower than this. So I would not actually expect to see much here. And of course the purple vines you see here, these are wild black raspberry covered in thorns. Always fun to walk through. Okay, so here we are on the end. And again, we'll stay off the railroad embankment here. And the stones end right around here, somewhere in that big pile of brush. So no current drain line under here, no water flow under here. Let's go check out that plateau a little bit down here, more in the floodplain. Then we'll get back on the trail. Good thing about coming through here in February, a lot less brush to fight through. Bad thing about coming here in February, well, black raspberries aren't ripe yet. So I thought I might've seen something over here go take a look. May have just been a uh, suspiciously horizontal log. And I see no water channels through here at all. But maybe right here. And this one's really shallow. Again, nature doesn't typically do long straight lines, doesn't typically do large flat areas. So those are things to look for. So there's nothing over here. This is sort of the ideal time to go looking for things like ruins though. You see the Huron River's just up ahead there. So we're down to that level. So nothing would have been built out this far in part it was going to be subject to flooding and in part because by the time you get here you've got no drop left so why take it all the way out here if you go looking for ruins in the in the winter 
either late fall after all the undergrowth has died back or early spring before any of it comes up, you don't have all the leaves in the way. If we were out here on this trail in the summer, we would not have seen those stones that we ran across. And I'm pretty sure those stones were probably the mill. In fact, further than that, if you look from here, the stones are just up ahead. And you see a downward slope along here into a wetland that's sort of cut out. If I had to guess, with no other information at all, and remember, you've seen everything I've seen, I would say that those stones, which are just up that little rise up ahead of us, was likely to be the mill, the foundation of the mill. And they dumped the water just ahead of us here into this low area, which is what carved out this little uh, low delta-shaped uh, gully here. And that was the, uh, the tail race, which is the part of the mill below your water wheel as you return back to the river. That's my guess at this point. And again, as we come back up here, you see we've got these stones are like literally right here on the edge of this rise. So it was built right up to the edge here. In fact, we've got another corner over here and another wall over here. Yep, those are manually placed here. And this run of stones. But you can follow them up and connect up to the stones that we saw before. So this is the mill. In fact, I can tell you a little bit more about it. Because if we come across here, here's more stones. And follow these ones up. You see just past the tree up there. That, just up past that forked tree, we have another set of stones. Uh, this channel's about six, seven feet wide, which is a pretty good width for a, uh, a mill race. So at this point, based on no other information than what we've, we've already gathered, I'm probably standing here in the middle of the mill race, headed upstream. This large pile of stones right here is likely where the heavy equipment would have been located. Uh, probably the mill stones. I'm guessing this would, would have been a grist mill. So I think we found our mill. Let's go see if we can find anything else while we're here. So we're back on this. This is the same trail that we turned down off the main trail initially. So I saw the rocks first, then saw that little side trail. And that's usually the way it happens. Although sometimes you'll see the side trail first and wonder where it goes. And you'll follow the side trail and find other things. I'm still keeping my eyes out to both sides. See what I can see. Don't know if there's anything here. If I had to guess, I would say maybe. Um, what else would you have out here? Well, possibly the Miller's house could be out here. Uh, again, it'd just be ruins. See, we have another side trail. Let's see what we have down here. I'm guessing it just goes down to the river. Well, we do have more stones. And there's more stones up ahead. And more stones off to the side. And then it drops down to the river. I wish I could see something that looked like a fireplace. And I don't. Uh, a common, common building structure. Uh, when uh, settlers first moved into the area, 
was to build a pile of stones and set your timbers on top of that for your house. Uh, so the stones then would be in a rectangular pattern. I'm not seeing a really good rectangle here. And that keeps your timbers off the ground and keeps them from rotting. But again, I don't see a real clear rectangular pattern in these stones. There's something over there. And a house would have a fireplace. And I don't see anything that looks like a fireplace over here. A couple of stones with some mortar would be great. I'm not seeing it. But again, more stones. Quite a few more stones over here, actually. I don't see any that look like they are like particularly well worked. May have just by a low stone wall on this uh, this edge of the drop off here, which wouldn't be that bizarre. A lot of the farmers uh, kept sheep or cows or pigs or goats. And it could be that they just built a, a low wall over here. If you came out here and you really wanted to know what was going on, you'd actually probably bring out like little survey flags and you could drop a survey flag in each of the uh, locations with stones so you could see them a little better. And then when you look at those, if you'll see, if you'll be looking for straight lines, you'll be looking for right angles. And that can tell you pretty well what's out here. Sometimes you can see them pretty clearly, like on the mill site, what we're assuming to be the mill site. Uh, we were able to see most of that stuff. Not always the case. I'm gonna keep an eye out to the sides. Lots of flat land, don't see any stones. I don't see much of anything over here. Fair amount of mud. A little fork in the trail. We'll go to the left now and we'll come back down on the other one just to make sure we don't miss anything. And muddy out here. I see uh, dog prints. People walk their dogs out here. Some deer tracks. So I stopped the next park over on my way here. And another good source of information is talking to people who live in the area. And there's a guy back there walking his dog. And this is right by Delhi Rapids. I asked him if he knew anything about the mill site over here. And look here, we have more rocks. And more rocks over here. I don't see any depression really between them. If this were a mill race, I would expect to see more of a depression. But if it's been down for a hundred years in a floodplain, that will fill things in quicker. We'll keep going. We'll see what we see. But anyway, I was talking with this guy uh, and he knew about the park over here and said he'd never seen any sign of any, any mill uh, structure of any kind over here or in the area. We did talk about a number of other mills that we both knew in the region. It's a great way to get information about places. It's talking to people who, who live there. Yeah, we're keeping a lookout both directions, see if we see anything.
One other thing to keep an eye on uh, if you go exploring is private property lines. And the website for this park, aside from having a very minimal uh, map, which you saw the same map on that sign, uh, did say that the trail does continue downriver, but there's a property boundary sign and they ask you not go beyond it. So we will certainly respect that. And we'll go to check out this. It's a large pipe. It could have been from a well. Could have been a, um, a fence post. This looks like this is going right back where we already saw. So we'll go take this other trail that turned off just a moment ago. Quite often as you follow rivers down, uh, you'll find a lot of uh, little fishing paths. Uh, trails that are cut along the river to get to places by fisher, fishermen. You can travel those as long as they're environmentally friendly. You're not about to cause a lot of uh, environmental damage by using them. Uh, they're usually relatively safe to travel and certainly easier than cutting through brush. So we'll turn up this way. And I will say I don't expect to see anything up this trail, but we are keeping an eye out. Uh, remember, we haven't seen any signs of a Miller's house yet. Uh, I would expect, what I would love to see from a Miller's house is actually uh, maybe four to six columns that it was built on of mortared stone, as well as perhaps uh, remains of a mortared chimney, probably field stone rather than brick. Now the information that I have about uh, the dates, the types of mills, the basic uh, construction techniques from the early settlers in the area, that changes from area to area, of course. That means that what applies here may or may not apply where you are. Uh, the more information you have about an area, the easier it's going to be for you to spot stuff. The easier it's going to be for you to hopefully figure out what's going on. So here's a little side trail, but in this case, I can tell the side trail just goes straight up that hill to someone's house. So we're not going to go up there. Again, when exploring, do protect, do uh, respect private property rights. Doesn't mean you can't go on private property. Does mean if you go there, you should ask permission first. Asking permission might seem like, you know, it's, you're not going to get anywhere, but two things actually can happen. Uh, one thing that happens when you ask permission is a lot of times they'll give you permission. Uh, the other thing that can happen is every now and then they'll say, sure, let me show you what's here. And you'll spend two hours going and checking out all the really cool stuff that they know about because they've lived there for their whole lives and they love sharing it. There's still no signs of any other construction, no signs of water channels. Uh, the, the water channels does not surprise me that much. Uh, again, we're in floodplain and floodplains uh, do tend to have a habit of erasing the water channels fairly quickly. So I think this uh, trail on the right here is the one that goes over to that first big side trail that we turned off from. Let's go down here and just verify that. And 
Make sure there's nothing along the trail, just for completeness. And you're probably hearing the, the crunching of the snow and ice from the shaded areas and the sloshing of the mud. And yeah, I was right. That's... So this is the first uh, big side trail that we ran into uh, after we found the ruins. So let's go ahead and go back up here and take that last trail, which I think goes back up to the parking lot. So given the drop that's available, you can pretty much assume that the water was probably in an elevated wooden sluice to come down to the mill. Uh, again, it is floodplain down here. If there had been a, an active mill, we're downhill quite a ways from the, from the rapids at Delhi, and you would have been throwing away all of that power, and they were too smart to do that. So it probably came down in an elevated wooden sluice. There won't be any traces left of that this far, this far uh, along in history. Remember, we're probably at least 100 years after the mill went out of operation. Uh, there won't be any signs of the mill race because that was elevated, at least in this section. Uh, the upriver section, up by the, just above the rapids, that's been then developed and leveled out. That's uh, a canoe rental operation up there now, so there won't be any signs there either. So again, we're keeping an eye out both sides of the trail, looking for stones that are out of place, looking for straight lines, big flat areas. Not seeing a whole lot. Again, just keep sweeping side to side. See if you can spot anything. See straight ahead, that, that light color, that's the rail bed again. Few little flattened areas. Uh, that's where the deer bed down at night in uh, protected areas. They're uh, sheltered from the wind. And this trail coming up is the trail we came in on. So I think we have explored this entire park. The, uh, the ruins we found, such as they are to the right, and parking lot is just up ahead on the left. Why don't you join me when we get up there? So how'd it go? Well, I would have loved to have found more, but compared to what I had, really did pretty well, I think. Uh, if you think about it, I came out here with nothing but a name. 
uh, Osborne Mill. That's all I knew about the place. Uh, and at this point, what I know about is a little bit more. Uh, from what I knew about the area, from what we found out on the trail, uh, it was probably built uh, early mid 1800s, probably a grist mill rather than a sawmill. The footprint was, just wasn't that big for a sawmill. Uh, we found what looks to be the footprint and the tail race from the mill. Uh, we found um, a sign on the way here that says that by 1917, it was probably shut down, possibly shut down in 1917 as a result of a tornado. Although it could have shut down well before that as well. A lot of mills did. Uh, we know there's no, uh, no visible mill race running up to it, no reservoir up above it. So the race was probably an elevated uh, wood, uh, wood trough to bring the water in from just above Delhi Rapids down here, uh, which was common in mills. I'm sure you've seen lots that, that use that. Uh, so we did, we do know quite a bit about this place. Uh, plus we had a nice, nice walk out, out in the woods and you can't go wrong with that. So this is the sort of thing you can spot just for, you know, if you know a little bit about the area, if you pay a little bit of attention to mills that you see that are operating or, or uh, mines or farms or anything you see that are operating, uh, when you find their ruins later out in the woods, you can get a pretty good idea of what you're looking at. And personally, I really enjoy doing that. And with a little bit of uh, practice, I think you might really enjoy it too. And you know, most of what you're going to find is, is stuff like mills, farmhouses, mines, logging camps, all of that stuff fun to see. And in this case, the Osborne Mill, it's all part of the Industrial Revolution. <laughs>